Welcome to Knife Thoughts. This video is going to be my full review of this knife, and this is the Axial Alpine V2. So this is the second version of the Axial Alpine, and it is the made in the USA version. So the Axial Alpine came out previously in this configuration, and I got to check it out. Um, and it was a, a nice little EDC knife, but had some things that, that I didn't prefer that I thought could be changed. And I also knew that they, they at Axial were hoping to make the Alpine in the USA like their out the front knives eventually. So I was really more looking forward to that and really excited when they shared with me that they were going to be finally bringing this to the market. And so they did the, send this knife for review. So I really appreciate that. I've gotten to you know, talk with and interact with Colby and Hunter and people at Axial. And I think that they really are people who care about making good products. Um, they're in the USA. They've been really ramping up their production. They even did an OEM for uh, another brand on an out the front knife. So I was just really excited to see this finally come to fruition. So what is this? Well, the Alpine is an EDC fixed blade. You can see it is a kind of medium sized fixed blade, I would say. It's not tiny, it's not a super small, kind of really, really innocuous EDC fixed blade, like something like these CRKT knives. But it is small enough that you can definitely carry it as an EDC knife even in your pocket. Now, I personally don't really carry fixed blades super often, or at least in, until I got this knife. I have lots of them, you know, I enjoy them a lot, I carry them outdoors. But for me, you know, if I can't carry it in a way that's comfortable, easy to access and put away, um, then I'm not gonna carry it. And that's really the first thing I wanna talk about with this knife is how easy I found it to be to carry. So as you can see, it comes with a very nicely made sheath. One of the things that I had you know, qualms with about the original Alpine was that the first one that I got or the first sheath just did not have the retention that it should have. The knife would easily shake out. Now they did you know, get me another sheath and this one works fine, but you can see it came with kind of a, uh, whatever these are called, clip. Um, and this new, sheath first of all they posted some pictures in production it was made um you know here in the usa by another local company whereas a lot of the processes are in-house uh, at axial but it is made in the usa and it has really nice retention it snaps in there really well definitely will not come out you know accidentally at least i don't think in any normal usage um and holds it in there you know really well but is easy to take out i like that there's this little thumb ramp here um, that you can put your thumb on to help pull it out and you know even when it's attached to a, a pocket i mean i carried this even in uh, like gym shorts and it was easy to take out uh, the other thing that makes it really easy to carry is the setup of the sheath so it's a you know fold over style sheath so there doesn't need to be rivets on this side and then this alta clip uh, i really like the alta clip i know some people really like the discrete carry concepts clip now but this the alta clip really makes it easy to carry in a lot of different ways i most recently i, I took this off of my backpack strap uh, to do this video because you know anything that you can really kind of get under this under this hook you can attach it to because you know you get the fabric under that hook and then this holds that down and so it's really on there uh, so i really do like the alta clip it allows you to carry it in a pocket on a belt in a waistband uh, on you know a strap i've carried it on my fanny pack strap things like that so it really is easy to carry now one thing because it's a pretty small attachment point um, sometimes if you you know like i've been carrying this in gym shorts and running and it has kind of like flipped out so that the uh the blade area here is like sticking up and the handle is sticking down outside of my pocket but like I say, because this Alta clip is so secure, it didn't actually, you know, fall out of my pocket per se. Uh, and the knife itself 
stayed in the sheath. So it's one of those things where you have to realize that if it's in a very small pocket or, or not, you know, well held against your body or something like that, it might rotate a little bit, but it's, it really, in my experience, isn't going to actually come off. So I really like the sheath, the Alta Clip, and it made it easy for me to carry, which is a huge deal for me with fixed blades. Most fixed blades, I'm just not going to carry on an everyday basis. Even something like these small CRKT knives, which I have set up for scout carry. It's just, you know, you, you can't really take it off of your belt easily. So if you have to go somewhere where you can't have a fixed blade or something like that, you have to take your belt off, which is always a hassle. You have to have a belt on. You can't put that type on, um, you know, just a, a pocket or pants. Something like, you know, the Mora, which I'm just going to show for a size comparison. Uh, you know, same deal. You just kind of clip it on. It's not super secure. And a lot of even really high-end uh, USA-made fixed blades just don't come with a great carry system. And it's a really big deal for me if I'm going to actually get my use out of a knife, you know, get your money's worth. You want to be able to carry it comfortably, and I think that they did a really good job of that. Now, when I got this, the Alta Clip was on the other side. Um, didn't really make sense for me as a right-handed person, but you can easily move it and adjust it. I did adjust the height um, a couple times just for for how I was carrying it. Uh, but I know that's a lot of discussion about the sheath. Uh, another thing to mention real quick is that the sheath works for all of the different blade shapes. And that segues us right into the blade shape. So this is what they call the Warncliffe. Uh, I would call this more of a sheep foot. In fact, I would say that it is definitely a sheep foot and, and less of a Warncliffe. Um, Warncliffe is maybe just more of a, a well-known name. And I think that the other thing is that they do use a Warncliffe blade shape on their out, out the front knives. And this is more of a Warncliffe. So they probably just went with the same name because they have the same three blade shapes. So they also offer this in a drop point and a Tonto. I actually don't have one of their out the front knives in a Tonto. I'm hoping to get one soon, uh, but they have a drop point as I showed previously. And then that Warncliffe. So this is the Warncliffe, but again, I would call this more of a sheep foot. And I think it's a great EDC blade shape. It's not super pointy if this is something that you would be buying as a tactical knife, which I don't really think this is the you know necessarily what you're gonna look for if, if that's what you're buying a knife for. But if you were, it's not the pointiest knife, you know. Uh, sheep foot is actually kind of made not to be pointy. So you do have somewhat of a usable point, but then you've got this kind of blunted area here and the corner, which is why I call it a sheet foot rather than a Warncliffe. A Warncliffe tends to have a continuous curve. It's not a perfectly straight edge. It does have somewhat of a curve and a belly to it, which I think is, is nice for general use. It's gonna make it so you can use more of the edge when you're cutting rather than just, you know, mostly working towards the tip. And it's a good, you know, blade shape for what I think most people really use their knives for, which is cutting cardboard, opening boxes, maybe some string here and there, some paper, opening mail, uh, and maybe even a little bit of food prep here and there. It works fine for that. It's kind of like a Santoku type blade. So I like this blade shape and it is ground well also. I was really impressed with the grind. They did a good job. I think a, a smaller fixed blade like this you know, it's it's not a bushcraft knife, so you want to have a nice, thin, slicey blade, and they definitely did that. Speaking of which, it is in MagnaCut, and I believe that it's hardened to 63, which is kind of like, you know, a, a sweet spot for MagnaCut. Uh, I'm not 100%, I'm not seeing that on the specs that it's 63, but I believe that that's what they told me, somewhere around there, 62 to 64 maybe. And uh, from other you know, companies using MagnaCut, uh, high-end uh, American-made knives. I think that that's really the sweet spot. You get a lot of corrosion resistance, good, you know, wear resistance and toughness, and it's just a super very <laughs> hyped up steel right now, but also just a good steel. And, and this was, you know, really uh, my first heavy use of MagnaCut. Uh, before this knife, I, I think that I had tried some knives in MagnaCut, but I just hadn't used them that much, and I have been impressed by it. It definitely holds an edge well, you know, hasn't corroded at all. I've used it for food and even in, uh, you know, a couple times in kind of the wet, like in rain and stuff like that. 
So, you know, definitely seems to be well done. I, I do, I've enjoyed getting to check out this extremely, you know, popular and hyped up blade steel. Um, now, one thing with the blade is that mine did get a good amount of scratches, and I actually don't think they're showing up very well. You can see them somewhat here from the sheath. So just like kind of putting it in and out of the sheath caused some scratches. So just be aware of that. I think you probably will have that on yours if you decide to pick one up. Um, but you can see that it says Axial USA on one side, and then it has the flag on the other side. I don't know that it says Magna Cut. Oh, oh yes, it does. It says it... Where does it say it? I thought that it said it. Yeah, there we go. It says Magna Cut here. So hopefully you can see that. But um, another thing is I thought that they could etch them a little bit harder, a little bit deeper of an etch, just so that it shows up a little bit clearer in pictures and stuff like that. You know, you like to see that Axial logo, which I really enjoy, and the American flag and all that. Um, but that's very much not a practical concern. Um, another thing I wanted to point out about this knife compared to the original Alpine is the guard here. So the original Alpine, one of my big complaints with it is that for me, when I was holding it, because there was no guard and the edge did go kind of all the way down to here, it would dig into my finger and even, you know, put a little bit of nick, bit of a nick in my finger. So I did actually end up grinding that there to, to take the heel off. Um, and, and I wasn't a big fan of that. So I'm really glad to see that they put this guard. You are definitely not going to have that issue on this knife. It's going to, you know, keep your hand from slipping forward. And being that there's not a lot of texture on the handle itself because of the handle system that I'll talk about in a little bit, you know, it's nice to have that guard there if your hands are wet or anything like that. And then there's also a sharpening choil. Everybody loves a sharpening choil. I think it does make it easier. I've kind of been uh, brought over to sharpening choils. I wrote an article about how <laughs> they were one of the things I don't like on a slip joint, but I am moving, you know, moving over to enjoying them. So I like that also. But a really well done blade. The, the drop point and Tonto both look great. Um, especially I think the, the drop point. I really like the sheep foot. I think this is what I would go with. But I think if I would get another one, I would probably go with the drop point. Although the Tonto is pretty unique also. So moving on to the handle, this is one of the things that really excited me about this knife. And it, it is that, as you can see, it has what they are calling their MagFlex system. So this is basically a customizable handle inlay system where there is the, the main or the frame handle around here. You can see it's held in by these torque screws. And on mine, it's stonewashed titanium. Uh, and then there are inlays, and these are magnetic inlays. So I wanted to show you kind of how they work. And first of all, this is Nebula Fat Carbon. Uh, they offered these uh, recently after the release, and uh, that's what I've been carrying in it since I got them. But it did also come with Black G10 and OD Green Micarta, which were some other options for the handles that I'll mention in a second here. Well, I'll just tell you now. It does also come in a handle that doesn't have this inlay system. So you can just get a plain stonewashed handle, stonewashed titanium handle, plain anodized titanium handle. Uh, those are, I believe, about 290, 295 um, with or without the stonewash or the anodization, I guess. And it also comes in a plain, no inlay, black g10 or od green micarta handle those are in the 229 239 i believe range so on the you know about a hundred dollars less than with this magflex inlay system i think that that's you know a real good price for uh, a well-made american-made kind of small batch uh, and also in really great materials usa made fixed blade um, but then they go up to about $330 with this inlay system. An interesting thing that I didn't realize is that whether you get the OD Green, the Black Micarta, or one of these fat carbon inlays, it's all this, it seems like they're all the same. They're all about $330. $330. And that is before the discount, which you can use my code, Knife Thoughts, uh, to get a discount on these. So, you know, they, it does bring it down somewhat. Uh, but that's, you know, the normal price. And it's interesting that they're all the same. I bought these inlays separate. It came originally with these and I uh, purchased the, the fat carbon inlays. 
But it's a really cool system because if you see this hole here, I kind of struggled with this in the unboxing video that I did, but it's because it's really helpful to have a little bit of a bend in this tool that came with it. So you do, you know, if you get this, you want to bend this. I think you could probably also just use like an Allen wrench, something like that. Um, but it goes down into this hole and you use this to push that inlay outward. So like this, and you can see there's magnets on there. You can do the same thing on the other side. It's a little awkward here in this direction with the camera, but you can, if you have the dexterity, do the same thing on the other side. And so it's just this kind of open area that you can put whatever inlays you want. Now, I think that they have plans for other inlays and I think that you could do all kinds of really cool stuff. I'd love to see natural materials like um, you know, jigged bone, saw cut wood, saw cut bone, even like abalone or pearl would be really, really cool. You know, that's kind of my traditional, um, you know, knife enthusiast coming out there, but you could also just carry it without an inlay. It's actually not uncomfortable at all. It's going to make it a little, little, little bit lighter, probably not a whole lot lighter, but you could definitely do that. But I do really like these inlays here. Uh, I like this red, white, and blue, and also black. Uh, that, you know, fits right in with the theme of a USA made knife. And you can see that they, you know, go in with the magnets and then same deal goes right in and they fit pretty well. They all fit pretty well. You know, not there's, there's a little bit of movement just naturally because it can't be a hundred percent perfect fit, but they do fit pretty well. And I think that it makes for basically unlimited customization. So, you know, you could get this knife and then end up getting, your micarta for micarta Monday, you know, wood for wooden Wednesday, yeah, all that kind of stuff. So I think that it does make for some really cool customization. Now, speaking of that, I did want to mention that in my unboxing video, someone said, oh, this looks a lot like the, I believe it's Boker and Daily Customs AK-1. And frankly, it does. Um, they, you know, there is similarity. But one thing I have to say is that, I say this a lot on Reddit, it's where it happens, People are really quick to cry plagiarism in the knife world. There is just a lot of knives out there right now. I mean, more than ever, it's a great time to be a knife enthusiast. Um, and there's going to be a lot out there. But there are, you know, some kind of striking similarities in that that AK-1 has the same three blade shapes. Basically, they're not exactly the same, obviously, but kind of the same general blade shapes. And it also has a customizable handle system. Now, it's not a magnetic, you know, and it's done slightly differently. It uses screws and just kind of, you know, an, a cutout. But there are, whoops, there are definitely some similarities. So I did ask um, the, the people at Axial, Hunter and Colby about that. And they said, basically, there, there wasn't any inspiration from that AK-1. It's just, you know, a coincidence. And so... It's one of those things where uh, I, I can see the, the person's point who commented on that video, but it's not exactly the same. And, you know, they said that there was an inspiration. So um, it's probably an, <laughs> you know, an unfortunate coincidence for them because I'm sure they'll get some questions about that. But anyway, it kind of is neither here nor there for, for this knife in particular. And I do think that this is a really cool knife. I have carried and used it a lot. I think it's a great size. Oh, I, I should mention too that it comes with this titanium bead, which is, you know, a nice touch. Um, I think that it's a, a great size, a great kind of um, utilitarian. There are great utilitarian options with these different blade shapes. It's very comfortable in the hand. That's something I, I didn't mention as much as I should here. This handle is very, very comfortable, more so than the original Alpine. Um, my fingers fit, all four fingers fit, and I've got pretty wide hands. All four fingers fit on this really well, and it just kind of locks into your hand. I think that they did a great job of the ergonomics on this knife. So it feels really good, kind of fills my hand pretty well. I've got kind of short fingers as well as wide, a wide hand, but it, it feels great in my hand never had any hot spots or any issues with the ergonomics and like i say it cut really well so i've really enjoyed it i've enjoyed getting to check it out and i want to show you some quick size comparisons i did talk about its size but didn't really show you much here is a mora basic sorry for the camera bump there and here is a more companion so again you know this is definitely not a comparison you know of materials or construction or anything like that 
um, just a size comparison. You can see it kind of, it's smaller than both of those. It's a, a smaller knife, but not quite as small as, again, the CRKT. Which one is this? This is the Minimalist. So a very popular EDC knife in the Minimalist. And then there is also the, what's that one called? Is that one called the, the Spew? Yeah, Spew. The Spew is a little bigger than the Minimalist, but still a small knife. And you can see that the Alpine is bigger than those two. So kind of sits between those, some of the more popular uh, fixed blades and uh, is a great size, I think, for carry. I know I have really enjoyed it. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what other inlays they come out with, to be completely honest. I, I am open to more. These cost about $50. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not nothing for sure, um, but it's nice to be able to customize your knife. And it's interesting that, that the knife itself doesn't necessarily cost more if you go with one of these fancier inlays versus the Micarta and the G10. Um, but a really cool knife, one I've really enjoyed carrying. I really appreciate uh, the people of Axiol, you know, giving me the opportunity to check this knife out. I've really enjoyed watching their development. I remember seeing the ad on Instagram and being really intrigued and reaching out to them and then seeing that they were going to be making out the front knives in the USA, which is really exciting, um, and kind of following them through <laughs> the pandemic and um, they kind of went somewhat dark for a little while, not really posting anything or updates and stuff like that. And so it was really cool to see, they actually brought out a uh, Balasong trainer uh, first. And I didn't get that because I'm not super into just flipping the Balasongs. I'd love to, if they make a live version, but, and then really excited to see this. So kind of rambling at this point, but I really am happy to see Axial, you know, having this new release. I know they have lots of great ideas for other models. So I'm looking forward to those and I've really appreciated and enjoyed getting to check out this Axial Alpine V2. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I'd be happy to hear any comments you have down below. I have a link where you can get this knife, help support the channel. And you can also use my code knife thoughts to get a discount on this knife and other knives at Axial. Also make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the bell and select all so you know when I post new videos. Um, check out my website, knifethoughts.com, where I post articles on knives like this and knife related topics. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.